Hello friends, welcome to the fourth episode of Health Vibes by Manipal Hospitals. Health Vibes is a one such initiative by Manipal Hospitals wherein you can ask all questions related to health with the leading doctors of Manipal. So today we will be discussing about a very important serious medical condition which has been completely unknown from last century, uh, in last century. But today, now, it's really been epidemic and it's spreading all over the globe. This epidemic is none other than obesity. So we all have different kinds of perception when it comes to obesity. We have questions like, uh, how do we be obese? Like some people are really thin, they want to grow fat. Some people are really fat and they want to reduce. And there are very uh, various risk factors of obesity. So to answer to all your questions today, we have uh, Chairman of Bariatric Surgery Department of Manipal Hospitals, Dr. Sumit Talwar. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Sumit Talwar to this show. Yeah. Hello. Uh, so Doctor, we already have lots of questions lined up. We have around 48 questions lined up uh, for today's show. Uh, meanwhile, I'd like to tell you to all the viewers, today's show will be live from 2 to 3 p.m. So all the questions related to weight loss surgery, obesity, uh, you can uh, type your questions on Facebook and doctor will try to answer all the questions as much as possible. So moving towards the first question, uh, it's from uh, Crystal. I am concerned about my overweight child. What can I do about it? Uh, childhood obesity or uh, overweight children is actually a very real problem and a very difficult one to treat. Uh, there are uh, multiple reasons for children becoming obese and some of them are related to hormones. So I would suggest that you consult a pediatric endocrinologist uh, about your child first. A pediatric endocrinologist is one is a child specialist who specializes in the hormonal problems of children. Once they have carried out the tests and uh, examined the child in detail, they will be able to suggest a proper treatment or a remedy for uh, childhood obesity. Okay. Uh, doctor, I had a question. Uh, like, what is the definition of obesity? Like, uh, when do we know that we are crossing our limits and some treatment is really important for this? That's a very good question, very pertinent question. So nowadays, we don't uh, classify people by their body types like apple shaped or pear shaped or uh, things like that. So what we measure is called a body mass index or BMI. BMI is the relationship of your weight to your height. It's measured uh, by calculating weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. So a BMI of 18.5 to 22.5 is considered normal for Indians and Asian populations. Between 22.5 and 27.5 is considered overweight. Above 27.5 is considered obese. Above 32.5 is considered morbid obesity because that is the time when the overweight actually starts to lead to problems which are medically important like diabetes or problem in the knees, blood pressure, etc. So the basic uh, tool for measuring obesity or defining obesity is body mass index. It's a fairly accurate tool but it cannot be applied to certain group of people like very muscular or athletic people or to pregnant uh, women. So judiciously applied, BMI is a very, very accurate and a very good guide towards uh, your weight and height. Thank you. Uh, we have a next question from Sachin. How can childhood obesity be prevented? And there's one more question. What is meant by childhood overweight? Is that the same as childhood obesity? Okay. So I think uh, for children, we also measure BMIs, but the, the limits of the BMI are not fixed like in adults. In children, there are uh, charts which relate the BMI to the age of the child. So according to age, the BMI the normal BMI changes. Similarly, the range in which the child would be considered overweight also changes and uh, the range in which the child would be con considered obese will also change. So for children, the charts have to be referred to. The best uh, point of reference would be again a pediatric endocrinologist who will be able to help you in deciding whether a child is overweight or obese. So basically obesity is just a severer form of uh, being overweight. I hope that answers the question. 
the about prevention of childhood obesity i think uh, most important is to be careful about uh, the diet and uh, keep a check on the amount of carbohydrates or sugars that your child is taking maintain a reasonable level of activity the child should be playing but again if the child is gaining weight despite everything it is best to consult a pediatric endocrinologist there may be a hormonal problem at play which is causing all the harm uh, this next question from mehman is obesity a disease a lifestyle or social cultural phenomenon and is treatment required for this very good question this is in fact the biggest uh, philosophical uh, change that has happened in medicine in the past uh, 20 to 30 years obesity was initially considered to be uh, the affected person's fault it was thought that it's a lifestyle disorder and it's a lifestyle problem and the person who is overweight is actually completely responsible for his condition but now we know that this is no longer true obesity is a disease just like high blood pressure just like diabetes just like asthma just like uh, any other disease that you may um, like to compare it to uh, it has been proven that uh, the person being overweight is not actually the fault of the person himself it is a complex hormonal problem which uh, which is regulated by a number of hormones which are being secreted by our body so people are uh, prone to obesity they have a predisposition to, towards being overweight and obese whenever there is a trigger like uh, disturbed sleep or stress at work or stress at school the environmental triggers trigger the obesity in people who are predisposed to obesity so now that we know that obesity is a disease so definitely the question arises whether we need to treat it or not definitely we need to treat it not because it is a disease but also because it is difficult to control with just diet and exercise and more importantly it gives rise to many life threatening uh, conditions like diabetes high blood high blood pressure high cholesterol obstructive sleep apnea or excessive snoring and choking in sleep uh, many joint problems the knee joint and the back problems it is also associated with a number of uh, cancers it increases the risk of uh, uterine cancer and breast cancer by 2 to 3 times in susceptible people therefore obesity definitely needs to be treated and it needs to be treated aggressively because it reduces the life span of the person affected so it's really important for us to be healthy and lead a healthy lifestyle absolutely. have a healthy food absolutely yes and uh, doctor I, uh, i had a question uh, what exactly is bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery because uh, many people are not aware what it is actually like i want to know what exactly is bariatric surgery okay so before i tell you what bariatric surgery is all about let me start by explaining why people are overweight so the concept that we now believe in is called a the set point concept that means a person has is of a certain weight because his brain and his body has decided or uh, it has decided that this is the correct weight for that particular person that particular weight becomes the set physiological set point for that person so when you try to fight that set point your body starts to compensate if you diet if you exercise the body will start to conserve more energy you become lethargic your body uh, your basal metabolic rate it will slow down and you will start to store more uh, food and spend less energy which is a um, protective mechanism against starvation so therefore we need what we need to do is actually we need to change this cycle that means we need to change the hormonal environment inside so that the set point is lower to a healthy weight for this currently the only treatment that works is called bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery in bariatric surgery we change the stomach and the intestines we operate on them and change their configuration in such a way that the body hormonal uh, changes uh, start to happen 
by which the set point is lowered. So when the set point is lowered, the patient or the person will start to lose weight gradually and naturally over the next one to one and a half years and will come down to his, his or her normal uh, weight. Okay. Okay. So we have other question from uh, Reshma. It's a very quite funny question actually. Why don't some people get fat even if they eat a lot? Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Uh, not everybody has the same hormonal uh, environment inside. So people who do not gain weight despite eating as much as other people who are overweight or obese, it is because their, their body the set point of weight of their body is lower or is in the healthier range. So they are likely to uh, spend more and save less with the same amount of food that they are eating. Even if they don't exercise as much as people who are trying to lose weight, uh, they will probably remain thin because that's how their bodies are designed. So we have to understand this difference. So there are some people who are prone to obesity and they will become uh, obese or overweight once if there is a trigger and there are some people who are uh, resistant to this tendency of obesity so that explains the difference that is exactly why we think obesity is a disease which needs to be treated medically or surgically for, it, for that example and it cannot be just managed by diet or exercise okay. so there is one more question from uh, Sumit Singh why is surgery the only long term solution for most of the people? Well, very good question and a very very pertinent question. Right now, the only treatment option which can change the set point of weight of a particular person permanently is bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery. In, there are two types of surgeries that we do, we will talk about that later. So when we do this surgery, the hormones which increase hunger, which increase the preference of the person towards uh, carbohydrates and uh, weights and, and, and foods that uh, lead to weight gain goes down automatically. The hunger goes down, the uh, preference to such foods go, goes down, the energy level actually goes up though even though the person is eating much less than uh, what he was eating before operation. And lot of other beneficial things start to happen even before the weight loss starts. So therefore, currently the only permanent long term and effective solution to the problem or disease of obesity is bariatric or weight loss surgery. Okay. So there is a question from Vishnu, can yoga help in weight loss? Well, all exercises will help you to lose weight to a certain extent and yoga is just another type of exercise. The advantage, other advantage of yoga is that it will, uh, it will make your body fitter, it will make you more flexible and it will make you healthier in a uh, fitness sort of way. Uh, most exercise and weight loss regimens, uh, diet weight loss regimens are not effective in losing more than 5 to 10 percent weight. So what you should be aiming at is just a loss of 1 to 2 kilos a month which should continue for maybe 7 to 10 uh, kilos. That is a very very achievable and a very fair target to aim at. If you are aiming at anything more than that, you are likely to be disappointed because it has been shown that not more than 5% of people can actually lose more weight than this. The other thing is maintenance. So whatever you do to lose weight, you will have to continue to do it for the rest of your life. Only then you will be able to maintain the weight loss. If you give up dieting and exercise once you have lost weight, the weight is likely to come back. And usually it comes back with a vengeance. That is why uh, we have what is called the yo-yo effect. So your weight bounces back, but it goes back to a usually a higher level than what it was before. Okay, okay. And uh, I got one more question in my mind actually. Mm -hmm. When, whenever it comes to weight loss, people, everyone prefer easy, easier way of losing weight. So there are lots of products, uh, we, we can see lots of ads on TV, maybe Slim Belt. Uh, there are lots of products, we have green tea, there are many things. So what do you say, is it uh, beneficial doing using such products? So um, I don't think that we have too many scientific studies on uh, 
many of these products like green tea or green coffee or slimming pellets or other external slimming treatments which treat the fat under the skin. The logic that they that they propose is that they are liquefying fat under the skin because that is what they can actually affect. The thing to understand is that the fat that has been deposited is not deposited only under the skin. That is not the only thing which is making you look fat. You gain weight in every part of your body and most of the weight, um, especially in people who have central uh, obesity, is actually in, on the internal organs. There is no way that any external uh, uh, device can reduce that weight, uh, reduce that fat. Uh, regarding the products which need to be ingested or eaten or drunk, for example, like green tea or any other medicines, I am not sure we have too much data on uh, these products. So I won't be able to comment on these, uh, on these products. I hope that answers your question. Uh, so the next question is from Aparna Sant. Which option is better to reduce weight, swimming or gym? Well, any exercise uh, for about 45 minutes to 1 hour, 5 to 7 days, 5 to 6 days a week is actually equally effective. Anything more than that, you may be able to lose more weight in the short term, which will be difficult to maintain. When you give up that level of exercise, you come back. So any exercise which is brisk and which is vigorous, brisk walking, uh, gymming or swimming, the level of activity has to be high and it has to be regular. At least at least 5 to 6 days in a week, 45 minutes to 1 hour, that is a very re realistic achievable target that can be maintained for a prolonged period of time. Uh, how important is water for weight loss? Well, I don't think water itself uh, can cause weight gain or weight loss. So if you take, if you drink a lot of water, maybe you will be a kilo or so heavier just after taking the water, but ultimately your body uh, will take care of the excess water, it will be excreted in one way or the other and you will come back to your stable weight. So the variation that we get during the day of 1 to 2 kilos is basically the movement of water. So dehydrating yourself or reducing the amount of water is a very common trick that people use to reduce weight in the short term, but it's not a good thing because it doesn't actually reduce the fat reserve of the of the person, which is actually what is bothering us in terms of uh, disease production. So reducing water is a good short term trick to lose uh, a couple of kilos, but it's not good for your health. Drinking more water also I don't think uh, really helps in any way to reduce weight because whatever extra water you drink, whatever the body needs, it will retain and the rest of it will be just excreted in one way or the other. Uh, there is a question from uh, Sneha, why am I losing weight but uh, not belly fat? So there could be many reasons for that, one is that uh, the amount of uh, overweight that you are uh, will actually determine that how much weight you will, will you need to lose to lose the belly fat or come back into the shape that you desire. The other reason could be that your muscles may be loose and that is why it is giving an appearance of uh, central sort of uh, obesity or bulges around the tummy. The most important thing to realize is that unless you lose, if you are significantly overweight, then you need to lose significant amount of weight for your shape to come back to the, the desired uh, shape or for you to lose belly fat. So 2, 3, 4, 5 kilos will not help you to lose significant amount of uh, belly fat. There is one more question. How effective is weight loss surgery? And if I am looking for a weight loss surgery, what are the different types which, are, which I can opt for? Very good question. So how effective is uh, weight loss surgery? As I just said, weight loss surgery is the, is the only effective and long term durable solution for the problem of for the disease of obesity. That is, I think we have proven it uh, beyond any doubt. 
uh, weight loss surgery in general is very effective. The target that we keep for ourselves to consider a particular patient's result that whether the surgery has been effective in this patient is not or not is that he should lose at least 50% of the excess body weight. That means if somebody is supposed to be 70 kilos and he is say 150 kilos. So the excess 80 kilos he should be able to lose at least half of that. That means 40 kilos he must be able to lose for us to say that this surgery has worked in this particular person. On an average, these common surgeries that we do, they cause a loss of 60% and upwards. And most of the people would lose somewhere around 70% of their excess body weight. Going by the same example, if a 70 kilo person is weighs now about 150 kilos, he would be able to lose maybe 50, 60 or 70 kilos of that extra weight by weight loss surgery. Coming to the types of weight loss surgery, there are two main types of weight loss surgery that we do uh, that are in vogue or that are considered effective today. One of them is called a sleep mastectomy or stomach staping, the other is called uh, bypass. There are two types of surgeries. There, is, there was a surgery called gastric banding which was in vogue uh, a few years ago but it is now not considered to be as good as these surgeries because of the results not being that good and the weight coming back after, after a few years. In sleeve gastrectomy, we remove a large part of the stomach. The stomach is the organ where you store food after eating and where the digestion begins. So the part of the stomach that we remove actually secretes most of the hormones which cause hunger. So once we remove the stomach, the hunger goes down and because the capacity is reduced, the person feels full after a very small meal. But there are other complex hormonal changes which also occur, which are secreted by the small intestine, even in sleep gastric. So the other type of surgery is called a bypass. There are many types of bypasses that we can do. The most popular or the most common one is called a Romawai and gastric bypass. In that, we make a small pouch of the stomach and also bypass a small part of the small intestine from the food. So the food that we eat becomes less in quantity and also some of that, some of that doesn't get digested and it is passed out as it is. But more important than that, because of the rearranging of the intestine, the hormonal changes which are causing the person to be more hungry, to be uh, more uh, prone to eating uh, carbohydrates and other uh, obesity causing foods, it goes down and also it affects positively the various problems that are associated with obesity. Uh, there is one such interesting question and uh, it's asked in almost all the forums, medical forums. So uh, drinking more, consumption of more beer leads to belly fat, increase in belly fat. Well beer is... Uh, <laughs> Not uh, any bad, any any worse or any better than any other form of alcohol. So all alcohol that we consume is basically calories. So whatever amount of alcohol we consume, it actually they are all empty calories, and they just get uh, deposited in our bodies. So beer or any other alcohol in any form would definitely give rise to increased ingestion of uh, total number of calories and these calories are basically empty, uh, useless calories, they just add to the fat deposit. The other thing that goes with beer is or any form of alcohol is the snacks. So if we are taking a lot of carbohydrate rich snacks and adding extra calories to our diet, so that also adds to the uh, fat deposition in the body. I hope that answers the question. Okay. So drinking this beer doesn't affect? No. In getting a beer belly, there is a term called beer belly. Yeah, there is a term called beer belly. I am sure there will be other people who have a whiskey belly or a vodka <laughs> belly as well. So, so beer is not, again, what I am repeating is beer is not any worse or any better than any, any other form of alcohol. It just uh, adds calories to your system which you don't need. Uh, there is a question from Aravind. I drink 10 liters of 6 to 12 percent sugar beverages per week. How much does this affect my weight fat? 
this this is a question related to something absolutely this is a very very good question we have just begun to realize in the past 5 to 10 years that uh, the culprit the actual culprit in weight gain is the sugars or the carbohydrates that we take so carbohydrates are either complex or simple carbohydrates simple carbohydrates are the sugars the sweet things that we eat. the complex carbohydrates are the ones that we get through rice chapati uh, potatoes and things like that so carbohydrates are the worst culprits for uh, weight gain and out of them refined carbohydrates like simple sugars or sugary beverages are the ones which are at the top of the list they are the biggest culprits so uh, if somebody is drinking any amount of uh, carbonated sweetened beverages in in in, in routine in their diet uh, definitely definitely it's going to add to their uh, calorie load is definitely going to add to the weight and fat Does walking fast help you lose weight? So I am from Simran. Simran, I have just, I think I just answered that question. Any form of exercise, I mean any form of exercise which is brisk and raises your heart rate by about fifty uh, percent of your resting heart rate and makes you breathless uh, is a good enough exercise to help you lose weight to help you keep fit. So walking briskly, 45 minutes to one hour a day for five to six days a week is a very good exercise. Okay. There's one more question from Wu B Wood. Do diet pills work for weight loss? Well, there are two kinds of diet pills that we are talking about here. One is the one one is the type of diet pills that are available of over the counter uh, generic diet pills by various companies. Uh, which contain Ayurvedic or uh, other herbal remedies. I am not sure whether they work because they have not been studied in detail. The results have not been proven. So I would not recommend you to take those diet pills without supervision of a doctor. There are some medicines that uh, doctors will prescribe to you to help you lose weight, but they are not a substitute for a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle, healthy exercise. Uh, regimen. They can help in losing weight in people who are doing, following diet and uh, exercise. So, right now there is only one type of medicine which is available in India, and one inject injectable is available, which is still under uh, sort of evaluation. It is being used, uh, but only by people who are well versed with their use and problems. So if you want to take any diet pills, you must consult a weight loss specialist, either a physician or a weight loss surgeon. Okay. Uh, so what are the various risks associated with the uh, weight, uh, weight gain with obesity? Well, yes, that's a very good question. Why, why are we so concerned about uh, weight loss and obesity? We are not uh, bothered just because it makes you look unattractive or we are bothered because it actually affects your body in many many ways. It gives rise to many diseases and it worsens many other diseases. It actually has been shown that a person who is overweight will be actually uh, living about 5 to 10 years less than what he would have lived if he, if he were not overweight or obese. So the list of diseases which are related or which are caused by obesity and which are worsened by obesity is a very long list. Start with the, the biggest uh, killer of all, like, is, which is called diabetes or high blood sugars. Then um, comes high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, a disease called obstructive sleep apnea, which is excessive snoring and choking during sleep at night, is also directly related to obesity. Then there are uh, multiple mechanical problems like joint problems in the knees, back problems and there are problems of urinary incontinence, especially in females uh, which is directly related to the weight. There are a number of uh, cancers which are related to obesity, it has been proven that the risk of many cancers like breast cancer, like uh, endometrial cancer and uh, colon cancer are related to 
you are uh, being overweight. Mm, there is a another disease which is called fatty liver or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is also directly related to uh, overweight and obesity, and it can be it can give rise to chronic liver disease and liver cirrhosis or liver failure also in the long term. Why we are so confident that these diseases are caused by obesity or worsened by obesity is that when you do this, when you do bariatric surgery and the patients start to lose weight, many of these diseases actually just disappear. They will become, they will start becoming better and a lot of people will, actually, these diseases will disappear actually. Uh, doctor, I have heard that diabetes has no cure, but I also heard that uh, by having a weight loss surgery, it's a cure actually, it's a cure for diabetes. Is it true, doctor? Very, very good question. Diabetes is basically of two types. The childhood diabetes or type 1 diabetes is something which is because of deficiency of insulin produced by the pancreas. So that is a different disease from adult diabetes or type 2 diabetes. The adult diabetes especially in people who are overweight or obese, is actually directly related to the obesity or overweight. Therefore, when we treat obesity, the diabetes also starts becoming better. So there are multiple mechanisms by, this, by which this works. There is insulin resistance in the periphery, in the fat, which uh, becomes less. The insulin production becomes better. The way the insulin acts in the body it also becomes very, very uh, sort of thrifty and uh, very efficient. So bariatric surgery will lead to remission of diabetes. I am mean, not sure that I can say that diabetes will disappear or it will be cured, but at least the, the diabetes will come down to such a state that the person will not require any medicines to maintain a normal blood sugar. So that is actually pretty close to cured as we know about it. So bariatric surgery in fact actually leads to remission of diabetes in large percent of people who are overweight and diabetic. Okay. So it's a better cure than any other absolutely, drugs absolutely, or medicines. Ab absolutely. The drugs that you need to take will never give you that kind of uh, 24 hour control which your uh, which bariatric surgery will give. It will, it will give you uh, natural or natural control from the inside of the body because we have reset the whole hormonal mechanism inside the body which is giving rise to the effects and uh, giving rise to raised blood sugars. Okay. Uh, one more question I would like to ask on behalf of all the viewers. Uh, after having a weight loss surgery, is it important that we maintain our diet again after? Um, it is important, but it's uh, it becomes much easier to maintain your diet. See what happens is once you have had weight loss surgery, your hunger will go down. The your drive to eat more food actually disappears. So you will eat only that much food that your body actually requires. One. Second is that the satiety that you feel after eating food comes up in a very short, uh, a very small amount of uh, food. So you will feel full very soon and with a very small meal. The third most important thing is that your preference towards foods which are actually giving rise to obesity automatically goes down. Your preference towards sweet things, your preference towards carbohydrate rich foods actually goes down. It has been seen in humans, it has been proven in uh, experiments in rats. So if, if obese rats, they are special type of rats which are uh, prone to being obese, obese rats are operated and they are offered carbohydrates or sweet foods, they actually reject uh, those kinds.